Good morning. I bring you greetings from Ebenezer Baptist Church of Cottage Hill, where Dr. Rudolph Overstreet is the pastor and Sister Doris Rudolph is the Sunday School Superintendent and Brother Paul Clausell is our technician. The adult men's Sunday School class is providing the lesson for today. Our class lead teacher is Deacon Donald English, who's assisted by Deacon Charles King and Brother Bill Hagler. And commentary is provided by Reverend Robert Odom. I am J. Malcolm Jackson III, and I am providing the commentary today. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ, who came to serve and not to be served, we come first acknowledging that we have sinned. We humbly come this morning asking, asking for your forgiveness, asking for your grace, asking for your mercy. We thank you for your blessings that are more numerous than there are stars in the sky. We come asking for you to continue to bless. Bless Ebenezer, the pastor of this church, Dr. Rudolph, Overstreet and his wife and family, the officers of this church and all of its members. Bless the sick and the shut-in, as well as all of your creation. Let this lesson today serve as spiritual food for our body and our soul. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray, and they all said, Amen. Again, good morning. Today, our Sunday school lesson is titled, Lydia, Called to Serve. Our Bible background comes from Acts, the 16th chapter, the 11th through the 15th verse and the 40th verse. And 1 Corinthians, 1, 26 and 30. Our printed text comes from those same scriptures. Our devotional reading is from Psalm 33, 1 through 12. And Psalm 33, 1 through 12, again, is our devotional reading. Our keep in mind verse today. It comes from Acts, the 16th chapter and the 15th verse. And it reads as follows. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Our outline today, we have four. The first outline is the ministry at Philippi. Acts 16, 11 through 13. The conversion of Lydia, Acts 16, verses 14 through 15 and 40. And the wisdom of the cross, 1 Corinthians, first chapter, the 26th through the 28th verse. And the benefits of the cross, 1 Corinthians, first chapter, 26th through the 39th verse. Before discussing the lesson for today, we would like to provide a short review of the theme of this unit, the call of women. On January 31st, Reverend Oden talked about prophesizing daughters and Anna. We know the story and the scripture tells us she was around 84 years of age and a widow and Jesus was brought to the temple by Mary and Joseph. Anna was considered to be a prophetess, and she saw them and declared to everyone that the child was the Messiah. That's Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38. On February the 7th, Deacon English brought the lesson. It was called to evangelize the Samaritan woman. Everyone knows that story from childhood. Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. He reveals to her that he is the Messiah. 
That's John 4 and 25. On February the 14th, Deacon King brought the message and it dealt with Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple, the first to find Jesus' empty tomb and she was also at his crucifixion, at his burial, and at his resurrection. That's John 1, 25 and 26. And then Brother Hagler brought the lesson, Priscilla. Talked about Priscilla and Aquila. Called to minister was the title. Paul called Priscilla and Aquila co-workers in the ministry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's Romans 16, 3 and 4. <clears throat> Today, February the 28th, we're talking about Lydia called to serve. I love that we're called to serve. Uh, one of the, my scriptures that I remembered from uh, college when I was at Selma University uh, became my favorite scripture because it talked about a colloquy that existed between Jesus Christ and two individuals, you all know them, James and John. The colloquy is a simple colloquy. It's a simple conversation. It says, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him saying, Master, we would that thou should do us for us whatsoever we shall desire. Jesus said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. <laughs> Jesus may have laughed, and probably, but I know he said, ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? And with the baptism that I am baptized, can ye be baptized? They said they could. Jesus said, you can drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized, you can be baptized. But to sit on my right hand, or on my left hand, is not mine to give. Continuing on in the scripture, it said, but so shall it not be among you. Whosoever shall be your minister shall be your servant, and whosoever shall be your servant, say that again, whosoever shall be your servant, your servant shall be chiefest of all. Continuing on in the scripture, Jesus said, the son of man came not to be served, but to serve. We're talking about Lydia, who came to serve, to show hospitality. After Paul and Barnabas successfully started numerous churches in Syria and the surrounding provinces, they desired to find a church in the Roman province of Asia. Initially, it was Paul and Silas who left from Antioch and were joined by Timothy at Lystra. However, the Holy Spirit, because in heaven they say it was three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And they were all one. And so he said, however, the Holy Spirit changed the plans to go into Asia and guided men instead to Macedonia. My grandparents used to sing a song that said, let Jesus lead you. Like I said, you got Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and God. So let Jesus lead you. He led my father. He led my mother. Let Jesus lead you. And sometimes that's what we have to do as individuals. When that little thing in the back of our heart tells us, Jackie, you shouldn't do that. That's probably God and the Holy Ghost telling me, trying to what? Trying to lead me. They say at this point, Luke, the writer of Acts and the writer of Luke, joined the team too. And they set sail from the eastern shore of the Aegean Sea. After meeting Lydia, the team stays in Philippi preaching. Now, theologians assert that Lydia is regarded as the first documented convert to Christianity in Europe. Lydia used her gifts and her place in society to support Paul's ministry. The name Lydia, according to theologians, is an ethnicon which described where she was from, Lydia in Asia Minor. She was also known simply as the woman of purple. Acts, 
describes her more specifically and says, a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, one who worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened to listen to the things which were spoken by Paul. Lily, Lydia, excuse me, Lydia insisted on giving hospitality and service to the Apostle Paul and his companions, Timothy, Silas, and Luke in Philippi. The ministry at Philippi as we start our lesson discussion today. That's Acts 16 chapter 11 through the 13th verse. It reads as follows. Therefore, loosened from choice, we came with a straight course to Samotracia and the next day to Neapolis. We're starting in verse 11 and so we don't understand and we may not know what happened so we have to go back and look at some of the earlier verses. So let's go back and look at Acts 16 and 6 and Acts 16 and 10 and it gives us a better understanding of what's happening. Acts 16 and 6 says, now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost, forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, Holy Ghost guiding us, Acts 16 and 10. And after he had seen the vision, Paul, immediately they endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. One really admirable trait that Paul had was when God called him to do something, when the Holy Ghost called him to do something, when Jesus Christ called him to do something, he did not hesitate, but immediately answered the call. He immediately goes to Macedonia. He understood the importance of obedience. <laughs> Sometimes you have children and you're trying to talk to them, no, we were trying to tell my mother used to tell me, said, uh, you're going to hear somebody. It's important to obey. I have three, four words, O-P-A-D, obedience, preparation, attitude, and devotion. Let's see what Samuel has to say about obedience. First Samuel 15 and 22 says, and Samuel said, have the Lord as the great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Acts 16 and 12 says, and from thence to Philippi, and which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Again, we see that Paul went to the main city of Macedonia. He passed over all those other cities and made it to Philippi. So this appears that it was the specific city he was told to come to by the Holy Ghost. Acts 16 and 13 says, And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and we spake unto the women which resorted thither went out to the riverside on the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 11 says the following. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. Oh, on it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or your daughter nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner result, residing in your towns. For in six days, in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. See, Paul is not speaking in a synagogue here. Scripture says where two or three are gathered, he is also. Paul is not speaking in the city of God, but on a river bank. 
it is also interesting that his first ministry here in Philippi is to women. This has to be the working of the Holy Spirit. We find later in Philippians 4 and 3 that the church in Philippi has two women ministering in the church and Paul tells them to be supportive of them. The scripture reads as follows, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Our second outline is the conversion of Lydia, Acts 16, 14, 15, and verse 40. Acts 16, 14 says, and a certain woman, didn't say a certain man, it said, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which spoke which was spoken to Paul. Well, what does Galatians say about women? What does it say about men? Galatians 3 and 28 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male. Say that again. There is neither male nor female. For ye all are one in Christ Jesus. It appears that the Holy Spirit sent Paul and others to minister to Lydia, a woman, and to start a church here in her home. It appears that Lydia worshiped God before Paul came, but after hearing the gospel message, received it with gladness in her heart. Acts 16 and 15 says, And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful, to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Well, what does Peter say about that? First Peter 4, 9 and 10 says, use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards. Say that again, as good stewards stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now we are not told who Lydia household was. She may have been a widow. We don't know. At any rate we do know she was a seller of purple for a living. She did as Paul had preached and was baptized and her household was baptized also. She insisted on Paul and his helpers coming and staying in her house if they deemed her worthy. If they deemed her worthy. Verse 40 says, Paul and Silas left the prison. They returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. Paul and Silas, because they had cast demons out of a slave girl and her master provoked an uproar that ended with Paul and Silas being placed in jail. That's described in the scriptures 16 through 39. But let, 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 let's look and just show you how Lydia was, the hospitality that she showed. It says, although Paul and Silas had been placed in prison for removing demons from a female, Lydia did not shun them or refuse to show her hospitality or service. What do we know if we see somebody who has uh, gone to file of the law? How do we act? How do we act when we see somebody uh, uh, on the street begging or whatever? How do we act? What is the Christian thing to do? We should be like Lydia, show our hospitality. The wisdom of the cross. 1 Corinthians 16, 28, 26 through 28. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 says, For ye see your calling. Say that again. Your calling. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many mobile are called. Romans 11, 33 talks about the wisdom of God. It says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. 
how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. <laughs> Romans 11 and 34 says, For who had known the mind of the Lord? Or who had been his counselor? Romans 11 and 35. Or who had first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? Romans 11 and 36 says, For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be the glory forever. Let it be done. God is looking for people who will serve him in whatever task he has for them. Martin Luther King talked about that drum major instinct. All of us have that. We want to be the leader of the band. I played snare drums. I was content. Be content in that station. There used to be a song, uh, thing they told us over there in that little town of Ozark. They said, if you can't be the pine on the top of the tree, if you can't be a pine on the top of the mountain, be a tree in the valley below. If you can't be a valley, a big tree in the valley below, be a scrub. But said, be the best <laughs> little scrub in the valley below. Again, God is looking for people who will serve him. You don't have to be a drum major. 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things which are mighty. Let's see what Luke has to say about it. Luke 21 and 15 says, For I, give you, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all of your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. The benefits of the cross, our final outline, 1 Corinthians 1, 28. It continues, and base things of the world, and things which are despised, had God chosen, God chosen, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Let's see what Paul said when he wrote to the church at Ephesus. He said, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto do good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. 1 Corinthians 1 and 29 says that no flesh should glory in his presence. I have nothing to boast about. Nobody has anything to boast about. It's all the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's see what is said in 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 6 and 10 says, Glory ye in his holy name. Not my holy name, not your name, but in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Galatians 6 and 14 says, But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, if you could think of all the truly good things of life, such as light, peace, and love, you would find that they are all caught up in our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate wisdom. He is righteousness. It is his righteousness we are clothed in that puts us in the right standing with God. He is our sanctification. He makes us holy. He is our redeemer. He is the redeemer to all who will accept it. Let's see what 1 Peter has to say. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, <laughs> a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness, into his marvelous, marvelous light. 
I say glory in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Now, if I may summarize, as we noted earlier in January 31st, Reverend Nova talked about prophesizing daughters and Anna. On February the 7th, 2021, Deacon Nicholas talked about evangelizing the Sumerian woman. On February the 14th, we discussed Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple of Deacon King. February the 21st, Priscilla called to minister uh, Brother Hagler. And today, we talked about the importance of serving and serving. Lydia called to serve, a businesswoman. You know, sometimes we get tied up in business. I don't have time for church. I always have time for church. Scripture is teaching when they're young, so when they grow old, they won't do what? They won't depart. It says that Lydia was the first European convert to Christ who allowed Paul and his associates to stay in her house. Now, this month, this day, this is part of what we call black history. And I think this is the time that we should celebrate Black History Month. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the role of black women and how they have, what they have played in history. Why? Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost. We must remember Phyllis Wheatley, who was the first African-American to publish a book of poetry. Charlotte Ray, the first African-American female lawyer and graduate of Howard University School of Law. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention Rosa Parks, who was at the center of the Montgomery bus boycott. Reverend Dr. Caroline McKinstry, who was in the 16th Street Baptist Church for Sunday School in 1963 when it was bombed and by the grace of God she survived. She wrote the book While the World Watch, a Birmingham bombing survivor comes of age during the Civil Rights Movement. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention Lily B. Williamson and Maddie T. Blunt who were early black Mobile County educators. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost. We must mention Catherine Barkin of Ozark, Alabama and, and Mamie Tompkins of Ozark, Alabama, who were two of the first black women educators in Dale County. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost. We must mention Fannie Lou Hammer of Mississippi, who was instrumental in supporting the voting rights black, of blacks in 1960. Stacey Abrams of Georgia, who was instrumental in supporting the voting rights in Georgia in 2020. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention the black women teachers most of us had in elementary and high school, who also taught us the importance of prayer. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention the ministers and deacon wives and trustee wives of Ebenezer and other churches who taught us and natured us and still let us know we are traveling wrong. We're not too old to travel wrong. We're not too old for somebody to show us the way. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention Ebenezer's own Judge Sonia Bizzins English and Judge Shelbonnie Coleman Hall, members of the federal and Mobile City Judiciary respectfully. Because knowledge never shared is knowledge lost, we must mention all of those individuals who have affected our lives who knew and know the importance of service. <laughs> Let me tell you a scripture I like to read. It says, because, see, everybody can't play quarterback, but you still can be an all pro at linebacker, a lineman. Let's see what Romans got to say about that. He said, we have Romans 12, 6 and 8 says, 
We have different gifts according to grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesizing like Anna, then prophesize in accordance with your faith. If it's serving like Lydia, then serve. If it's teaching like the teachers I mentioned, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give them encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. These women and many other black women know the importance of ministry, providing hospitality, know the importance of serving, know the importance of supporting mankind as Jesus Christ has taught and demonstrated by his example. That concludes my presentation for today. If we could bow our heads and pray. God of our silent tears. God of our weary years. God who has brought us safe thus far. We come thanking you for the multitude of blessings you bestowed upon mankind and sinners like me. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the women in the Bible that we have discussed today. We especially thank you for the many black women whose shoulders we stand on, those women who were dedicated, those women who were constant, those women who were steadfast, those women who were devoted, those women who were reliable, and, and those women who were faithful to your most holy word. We ask that you continue to bless all of your creation. In Jesus Christ's name, they all said, amen.